Hey everybody, welcome back. We've been talking a bit about transformations and combinations of random variables. What happens, in other words, when we um, multiply a random variable by something, magnifying it? Um, what happens to its mean, to its variance? Uh, and now, what happens if we do that to pairs of variables, magnifying them by different amounts? How does that affect covariance and variance? In the grand scheme of things, we'd like to analyze something like a portfolio of different stocks. We know that the stock is going to vary. For example, if we were investing in, let's say, um, IBM, then you know IBM might look something like that. And Apple might look something, you know, like uh, like that, more volatile, but increases a lot more. So that's AAPL. Uh, and so we might consider, well, what would happen if rather than just having one share of IBM and one share of Apple and seeing, well, you know, do these things move together? We might wonder what would happen if we had five shares of IBM and let's say 10 shares of Apple. What would happen to the covariance between X and Y, between Apple and IBM, if that covariance was then if, if each share was magnified by, by five shares and ten shares. Ultimately, what that's going to help us do is figure out what the variance of a particular portfolio is. So we want to know the variance of five shares of IBM and ten shares of Apple. Or, let's say, 20% um, IBM and 80% Oops, 80% Apple. And to answer this question about the variance of our portfolio, we're going to need to know how our assets co-vary with each other. So that's what we're going to spend the next video talking about, is what happens to the covariance between two variables when we magnify them by different constants. So we might have two variables, x and y. And we've got some numbers there for x and some numbers there for y. And we might calculate the covariance between x and y. Now that's all well and good, but then what happens if we, we do 5x and multiply all of our x values by 5 and all of our y values by 10? We would get different numbers and we would have a different covariance. So the question we're asking now is what is the covariance of transformed x and transformed y? It is going to be related to the original covariance multiplied by the product of our scaling factors. In this case, it's going to be multiplied by 5 times 10, or 50. But let's see why that's the case. Now the way to start all of these is to remind ourselves what the formula for covariance is. So the covariance between any two random variables, what you do is you take your first x, subtract off its mean, multiply that by the first y minus its mean, and then you do that for all of our observations. And once you've done that, you divide by n. So to expand on that, we would have 1 over n, and then we'd have x1 minus x bar, y1 minus y bar, plus x2 minus x bar, y2 minus y bar, and so forth. So let's apply this formula for covariance, but let's apply it to our newly transformed variables. And let's keep it general, and rather than committing to 5 and 10, let's do, let's do A and B. So using this formula, what is the covariance of AX and BY? So all we need to do to figure this out is to plug in AX over here, wherever we saw X, and BY wherever we saw y. So let's do that. We would have a x1 minus the average of ax1. Let's use our expectation operator there. 
So that was this part. Let's do this for the corresponding y. That is b y1 minus the expectation of b y. And then we do that for our second term. A x2 minus the expectation of A x. B y2 minus the expectation of B y. And we do that for all of our terms. Now this is definitely a hairy kind of formula, but it will simplify. Now we see here some familiar things. The expectation of a transformed variable. And if you go back a couple of videos, you'll remember that the expectation of AX is just A times the expectation of X. Or in other words, it's just A X bar. So we can simplify this. So we have A X1 minus A X bar. All right, so that's this guy here. And now let's do this. We have b y1 minus b y bar. OK, that's so much for our first pair of observations. What about our second pair of observations? We need to do that here, too. So we have a x2 minus a x bar, b y2 minus b y bar and so on. Okay, We can factor some things out. We can factor an A from here and a B from here. So we have A x1 minus x bar and then we can factor out the B. Alright, let's do the second term. We can do the same thing. Oops, x2 minus x bar b times y2 minus y bar, and so forth. And now all of these terms here are multiplied by each other, so the order doesn't matter. So we can pull out this b and just kind of put it over there. So we have a b x1 minus x bar, y1 minus y bar, plus a b x2 minus x bar, y2 minus y bar, and so forth. This AB term shows up in all of our additive terms here, so we can pull out that AB, leaving us with AB, 1 over n, x1 minus x bar, y1 minus y bar, plus, uh, we pull out that AB already, so we just have x2 minus x bar y2 minus y bar, all the way to the end, xn minus x bar yn minus y bar. But holy moly, if that doesn't look familiar, it should look familiar. Notice that this term here, is equal to this term right here. That's equal to the covariance of x and y. So we've just proven something here. We've just proven that the covariance of ax by is equal to a b times the covariance of xy. It's supposed to be covariance. So we've just proven what we need to prove. So the main use of this is going to be for us figuring out what the variance of a particular portfolio is, the variance of a sum of random variables. But real quickly, we could do a, a, a pretty quick example. If we know, for example, that the covariance between x and y is, let's say, negative 20 percent and we have five shares of IBM so A is 5 and 
let's say, 10 shares of Apple, then what is the covariance of, rather than having Apple, oops, sorry, 5 IBM, oops, let's start that over, 5 IBM and 10 Apples, we have all that data, then the covariance is just going to be is going to be 10 times 5 times the original covariance. So it's going to be 50 times negative 20%. So that is going to be negative 10. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.